you, my brother, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are buried in life with Christ and raised to walk. There are some things that never get old, and starting your worship service off with baptism never gets old. Amen? Amen. Man, what a joy it is. Uh, those baptism waters have been stirring the last uh, month or so, and we're just stoked about that. So we're thrilled to have you here this morning. Uh, there will be a personnel committee right after church to talk to our pastor about turning on the heater in the baptistry if we continue to baptize people, because he's got these rubber things on, you know, the waiters, and he doesn't feel anything, so... <laughs> But they're freezing, so we need to talk, we need to talk about that heater. But man, we are great, uh, stoked to have you here this morning. Uh, we're going to have a great time in the house of the Lord. We're going to stand up. We're going to sing a new one this morning. Well, it's not new, but it's new to us. Called "Holy Is the Lord." Let's get our worship on. Here we go. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down, we worship Him now How great, how awesome is He Together we sing Everyone sing Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord, God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing 
everyone sees. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. It's rising up all around. It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Everyone sings. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. filled with his glory holy is the lord god almighty the earth is filled with his glory the earth is filled with his glory amen you may be seated Uh, we want to welcome you this morning, as uh, Brother Brian has uh, alluded to earlier. Um, we do have a, a connection card. Uh, if you're visiting with us, a uh, guest with us this morning, uh, we're thrilled to have you here. And if you would be so kind, uh, whether you're here for the first time or the 6,000th time, uh, if you want to uh, fill out this connection card, uh, tear it off and just throw that in the two gray offering boxes on the back wall. <coughs> excuse me, uh, we would consider that your gift to us this morning and we would love to connect with you uh, and see if there's any way that we can help you or serve you in any way uh, this coming week. Um, like I said, we've got a great, exciting uh, service plan and we hope you're strapped in, ready to go and we've have, that you've had a good week. Uh, we're going to start off with prayer, as we should, and uh, then we're going to get right back into our song service. So would, if you would bow with me, please. <coughs> Father, what a privilege it is to be in your house this morning. What a privilege it is to be able to praise you and worship you. And Father, we really should be doing this every minute of every day. That should be our life song. But we set aside this time together, Lord, to just lift your name high for all the wonderful things that you have done for us. For saving our souls, Lord, for dying on the cross for us. Father, we thank you for our brothers and sisters this morning that have been baptized in, into our family. And Father, we pray as a church that we would wrap our loving arms around them and just be an example for them and love on them and minister to them as they grow in admonition of the Lord, Father. 
We pray that this church will be a blessing to them and a, and a great stronghold in their life as they continue to grow up. Father, we ask your presence in this place right now. Father, we just, uh, today is not about us. It's not about our feelings. It's not about our week. It's not about our shopping list. It's not about where we're going to go eat. Right now, it is about you and you only. And so, Father, we just ask that you would take everything, all the clutter and noise out of our mind, and that we would solely focus on you this morning. In Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Let's continue our service. Let's stand up together when the roll is called to yonder. Here we go. <clears throat> when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, when the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. this morning with a song called I Need You More. Here we go. <clears throat> I need you more more than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. Than ever before, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more. More than yesterday, I need you more. More than words can say, I need you more. Than ever before, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. More than the air I breathe. More than the song I sing, more than the next heartbeat, more than anything, and Lord, as time goes by, I'll be by your side, cause I never want to go back to my old life. I need you more, more than yesterday, I need you more, more than words can say, I need you more, 
than ever before. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you more. Come on, church, sing it. Than ever before, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. Need you, Lord. you may be seated. At this time, we want to go ahead and dismiss for Children's Church. So if you're in second grade or below, you are welcome to head on out for Children's Church at this time. And for the rest of us, a couple different upcoming events and announcements. First of all, two great ways to connect with what's going on at Hyattsville Baptist Church. The first one is our Crosstalk newsletter, uh, which comes out every so often. We've got a great issue full of all kinds of new faces to, to learn uh, from here at High School Baptist Church. So I encourage you to grab a crosstalk out in the lobby and be sure to keep up with that through our newsletter. But also we encourage you to come tonight to our business meeting. And so tonight at 6 o'clock, y'all know I love it. It's one of my favorite times of the month. We get together for business meeting. And while the name isn't the most exciting name in the world, what is exciting is coming together every month to see what God has been up to in our church and where he is leading us next. And particularly, if you're a member of Hydesville Baptist Church, this is the time where you are kept in the loop about what's going on in different capacities of the church and are able to help us make decisions about where we're going next. And so I encourage you, come to business meeting, be a part of that business meeting, and uh, that all kicks off tonight at 6 o'clock. My last announcement I've got is to encourage you about our uh, cancer uh, support ministry that happens on Monday nights once a month. Our next one is tomorrow at 7 o'clock. The Kirkpatrick family, uh, I even saw it featured in the newspaper this week about the cancer support ministry. I know there are quite a few here in our congregation that are a part of this ministry already and many others who have been touched by cancer either themselves or with a loved one close by and may need an extra shoulder to cry on, a little encouragement through it, or maybe just to, to share in a fellowship with other believers who have gone through a similar journey as yourself. Whatever you may be on that journey, I want to encourage you to check out our cancer support ministry tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right over in the fellowship hall, uh, the, the next main entrance over, and uh, I can about guarantee you will find encouragement there. Our last announcement this morning comes from the illustrious and verbose Roxanne Humphrey, and she is going to come and share with us at this time. Ooh, that was quite an introduction, wasn't it? Um, the first thing I have is our WMU conference next Saturday. Um, if you have not signed up, ladies, we would love for you to sign up and join us that day. It's from 1030 to 130. Um, we are gathering as Sisters in Christ to share just a day of, uh, we're going to have a nice lunch, we're going to have a program. Um, if you are not in WMU, uh, you can come anyway. We encourage you to. We have a sign-up sheet out on the bulletin board right out here. Please sign up today um, so we can have a number of about how many might be attending. We've got a good group coming. Uh, the response has been really good, and I'm excited about that for next Saturday. So if you have not signed up and you would like to join us, we would love to have you, whether you're in WMU or not. Uh, the next thing is backpacks. Um, if you have not signed up to do a backpack uh, for this year, uh, please run after service, don't walk, to sign up to do a backpack to help uh, in this mission and join us with that. If you are not a shopper 
and you would like to join us in that, you can um, give us your money, and there are those that love to shop, and we would love to do that for you. Um, also, you can partner with somebody. If you don't feel like that you can do a backpack on your own for these kids in Eastern Kentucky, um, just partner with somebody. We've got several people that are doing it that way also. And the deadline to turn these in is not until October 2nd. So we have plenty of time to do them. We're just getting started a little early because there's lots going on around Christmas time and um, so it makes it a little easier on us financially um, to work on that from now until then. Um, a couple of things you need to know, it, there's a list out in the foyer where you sign up that you can get to tell you what to put in your backpack and how to pack it. These go to Eastern Kentucky. Um, they go to Eastern Kentucky every year, but this year especially we want these kids um, to have a good Christmas and we can be a part of that and help. Um, the, it tells you to put the Christmas story in there. You don't have to do that. We have that prepared for you and we'll take care of that. It says to put ribbons on them. You don't have to do that either. We're going to do that for you. All you have to do is fill the backpack um, and just stick a little note inside if it's for a boy or a girl and what age that that is so we know how to label it. Um, and let's see. I think that's all I have. Join us in those two things and you will be blessed yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Bravos. Roxanne Humphrey. I Googled that word, by the way. It doesn't exist. So your preacher is making up uh, words this morning. So listen carefully to the sermon because I'm not sure what's next. Philippians 2, 5. Having this mind amongst yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow in heaven and earth and under the earth, and every tongue and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Let's stand and sing about that beautiful name this morning. Here we go. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. 
nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. could not hold you the veil tore before you you silenced the boast of sin and grave the heavens are roaring the praise of your glory for you are raised in life again have no rival and you have no equal now and forever God you reign cause yours is the kingdom and yours is the glory yours is the name above all names what a powerful name it is what a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. You have no rival. You have no equal, now and forever, God, you reign. Cause yours is the kingdom, and yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. What a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ our King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus what a powerful name is the name of Jesus Amen Amen you may be seated no rival the first time that came up I want us to look at the words and just think about this. Hear this one last time. You have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is the kingdom. Yours is the glory. Yours is the name above all names. That is the God we serve. That is our Jesus. And that, that is the God that last week we, we talked about, that we are called to love that God, to love that Jesus with all of our being. And we talked about it. Hi, it's Baptist Church. Our purpose is to love God, love people, and make disciples. And we discussed primarily loving God with our whole being and then loving people as an expression of that love played out. But then we got to ask ourselves, if we are to love God and love people, how do we put that into action? How do we as Hyattsville Web Church practically do that? And that is our main point this morning. My main idea is this. All disciples of Jesus find comfort in the person of Jesus as we make disciples of Jesus. And if there is one word there that I want you to catch, it is the name of Jesus. 
Because that is what it is all about. Everything that we do, everywhere that we go, every ministry that takes place in this church and outside of this church under the banner of Hyattsville Baptist Church is about Jesus. It's about loving God. It's about loving people. It's about making disciples. This is our job. As Hyattsville Baptist Church, this is what we do. Love is how we do it, and making disciples is what we do in it. And so, we're going to go to Matthew chapter 28 today. Book of Matthew, it's the first book of the New Testament. I want to encourage you to turn in your Bibles there and follow along with me. If you don't have a Bible, there's some black ones right there in front of you in the pew. And if you don't have a Bible at all, take that one home with you. That's our, our gift to you. We want to make sure everybody has access to God's Word. Matthew chapter 28, and we're going to start out in verse 16. This is the final few moments of Jesus' life here on earth. He has already been crucified on that cross. He has already been in the grave, and he's already curb-stomped death and evil in the face and stomped up out of that grave on Resurrection Sunday and declared victory over evil. And then he spent the next month or so hanging out with his disciples, appearing at different times. Sometimes we're eating breakfast, having a good little fish biscuit out on the beach. I don't know how I feel about fish biscuits, but that's what they were up to. Sometimes he's showing up like a ghost peering through a wall, just pops out of them, hello, and they don't know what to do with that. But on this last time that Jesus is going to be with his 11 disciples, he takes them up on a mountain. It says in Verse 16, the eleven disciples traveled to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped. Other translations may add that they worshipped him, but I think that's, that's pretty straightforward. They worshipped Jesus, but some doubted. Jesus came near and said to them, All authority has been given to me on heaven and on earth. So that means everywhere. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age, all of the days. And so we're going to dive into what this means for us as believers. But before we do, I'm going to pray. I'll pray for you. Y'all pray for me. And then we'll dive into this together. Let's do it. Father God, I pray this morning, Lord, as we, we have already worshipped in, in many capacities, we have celebrated through baptism, symbolizing death into life. We have celebrated through song and sung praises to your name. We've sung the gospel this morning. Lord, we have spent time in prayer. We've gone through church life events and talked about different things you are doing here in our midst. But Lord, now we come to your word. To where you have spoken to us. And Lord, this, this crucial passage where you've given our primary task as believers. I pray that every one of us here this morning would hear your word and that it would work to change our lives. That it wouldn't be something I say. Lord, whatever's of me, I don't, I don't care that it's remembered. But I do pray, Lord, that what it comes from your word brings about life change. I pray, Lord, for anyone here this morning who has not yet trusted in you as Lord and Savior. As we saw these two young people this morning do it, I pray, Lord, they'd walk in their footsteps. They'd follow right them as Eli and Arya have followed you. May they, too, follow Jesus this morning. I pray, Lord, for anyone here who needs to make a decision about declaring to the world that they follow you through baptism, or maybe they need to join in with a church and church membership, or maybe they are being called into some specific ministry. I don't know, Lord, what you're calling people into, but you're calling people to something. None of us should leave the Great Commission and think, well, I've got that figured out. Lord, I know you're working in each of our hearts through this, and I pray that would happen right here and now. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. I got three points as we walk through the Great Commission today, and I hope that it applies into our lives um, and that it teaches you as it taught me this week. Here's the first truth I want you to see from this. It's that all disciples of Jesus are commissioned by Jesus. I say all intentionally. I mean 
every single person who claims the name of Jesus. You can be like, well, that's a bold statement. Why would you say that? Well, look with me at verses 16 and 17. It says, the eleven disciples traveled to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had directed them. Jesus had told them to go there, and they all went. Anybody who felt like Jesus was talking to them, there in the eleven, they said, all right, he told us to go to this mountain, we'll go to the mountain. Sounds good. But then it says, when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. I think it's interesting that there are really two groups here at the mountaintop. Two different kinds of disciples. Some of them seem to be kind of rock stars. They're, they're worshiping. They've come to the mountaintop. They're praising Jesus. They've got a little Baptocostal in them or something. I don't know. They might be speaking in tongues, making up words like I did earlier. I don't know. But they're worshiping. They're celebrating. They're excited to lift high the name of Jesus, to celebrate their resurrected Savior. But some of the disciples are, are a little iffy. They've, they've been around. I mean, we're talking about the 11. We're talking about the original 12 disciples that Jesus called, minus old boy Judas. He ain't in the picture anymore. But the other 11 are still here. They're there. And even some of the 11 are skeptical. you got to remember their, their whole perception of who Jesus was going to be as the Messiah, as the King, as the one coming to fulfill the role as Christ was that he was going to go and conquer Rome and be this geopolitical leader of the area. And that didn't happen. Jesus came and taught for about three years, traveling throughout the countryside. Did some miracles, healed some people, shared the good news of the kingdom. And then the Romans and the Jews worked together, killed him on a cross. And then miraculously, he resurrects. And then he shows up to him for about a month. And you got to understand, I mean, I, I feel like I'm right there with him. Like, oh, I would still be like, what is going on here? This is not what I pictured at all. Because who would? Who would have been in the place of these disciples and been like, well, this is normal, yeah. My, my teacher that led me through the wilderness I thought was uh, the next great political leader, yeah, he got killed and then he came back. Hmm. It had never happened before. You'd never had someone like Jesus resurrect themselves. They'd seen Jesus resurrect another couple people. But they'd never seen anyone resurrect themselves. And they didn't know yet how to feel about that. And maybe you too aren't exactly sure sometimes how you feel about Jesus. It can be easy to feel like there are two groups of people in churches. That there's some who are the worshipers, they're killing it, they're great, they're, you know, they're the church leaders, they're your, your pastors and your teachers and all these people. And then there might feel like then there's you, right? That you're like, man, I, I battle with doubt. I struggle to even know how I feel about Jesus and his church sometimes. I don't know how I feel about his truths. I don't know always how I even feel about it, his people or what he's calling me to do. I, I just don't know. And I just want to encourage you today, there is not a believer in this room that is not in that second category in some way, shape, or form. There are no super Christians. There's nobody in this room that's got it all together. There's nobody in this room that's this ultimate worshiper. There's no levels to this as far as are you hitting this point of what you're supposed to be as a Christian and then the rest of us, oh, well, you peasants. It's not how this works. Every one of us are a holy hot mess just walking and trying to trust in Jesus. In some moments, we're the worshipers. In some moments, we're the doubters. That's a life with Jesus. Some of you may be familiar with the, the movie from 1940, Fantasia, where for some reason, Disney decided to quit making fairy tale movies for a hot minute. And they said, you know, let's just take orchestral music and put some cartoons for it. The kids will be really into Tchaikovsky, I promise. I don't know why they thought that was a good idea. It's beautiful. Wild move in your third movie. But in the middle of that movie, the most famous clip in Fantasia is that of Mickey Mouse's first appearance in a Disney movie where he's the sorcerer's apprentice. And you see this sorcerer, he's, you know, making all this magic happen or whatever, and it's all coming out of a skull somehow, whatever, it's magic. It's a Disney movie. And then he lays his little magic hat down, and he goes to bed. 
And he's left Mickey, the apprentice, with the task of taking water from the well and filling up another well. I don't know why. Again, it's magic. And Mickey thinks, well, this is going to take all night. <laughs> and so instead, he puts on the little magic hat. He waves his fingers around with his little, you know, stripy gloves. And next thing you know, brooms are carrying buckets of water. And so then he sees, oh, we got a broom, it's carrying water, it's doing my job, and I'm just going to lay down and take a little nap. And then he wakes up, and, and is, he's floating. Because the broom has carried so much water in continuously, using his magic, that it has now not only filled up this second well, but now everything in the room is floating, the desk is floating, the, everything is underwater. And Mickey tries desperately to stop it. He eventually picks up an axe and chops up the broom and thinks he's got that figured out until all the pieces of the broom became other brooms and is a disaster. He was not doing that laugh at that point. Sometimes I feel like the sorcerer's apprentice when I'm a disciple, when I'm an apprentice of Jesus. I feel like he has entrusted me to a task and I, everything I do ends up doing the opposite of what is helpful. And sometimes I wake up and I look around me and it seems like the whole room is floating and I don't know what has happened. Sometimes I feel like Mickey. And here's the good news. Every time we mess up, every time we fail to worship truly, every time we start to doubt, every time we make a mess of following Jesus, just as the sorcerer appears at the end of the clip and makes all things right, so too is our Jesus. He is always there to make things work out for the good of his people and for the advancement of his name. No matter what we do, no matter what mess we might make, no matter what disaster we may cause, Jesus is always there. And that is the second truth that we see here, that not only has he called every one of us, no matter what a disaster we are, to make his commission fulfilled, but he also wants to comfort us as we do it. We see in both verses 18 and 20, two different aspects of who Jesus is, the person of Jesus, that should bring comfort to our souls as we try to follow him as his disciples, as his apprentices. The first is his authority, he says in verse 18. All authority, all rulership, all kingdomhood has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He is the Lord. He is the king. He is the big dog upstairs. He's the one running the show. He is the supreme ruler of it all. Everything in heaven and on earth, and that's just code for all of it, falls under his leadership. It takes you back to Matthew chapter 1. This same book of the Bible at the very first chapter shows a lineage of the kings of Israel showing how the kingdom had passed from David all the way down to this Jesus. And then Jesus ends the book by saying, oh, by the way, I am that king. I am that ruler. And in fact, I'm not just the ruler of Israel. I'm the ruler of the whole shebang. And that's true whether we claim it or not. Whether we admit that Jesus is king or not, he's still ruling and reigning. He's still at the right hand of the Father with his iron scepter ruling over the cosmos. And that means that as he calls us to work on his behalf to make disciples, to make more apprentices of Jesus, he has the authority to tell us that because it is all his kingdom. There are no rival kings. There are no rival nations. They can be like, nope, this turf is off limits. I've got this area. This area is for apprentices of Muhammad. This area is for apprentices of Buddha. This area is for apprentices of whatever. At the end of the day, whether we admit it or not, it is all Jesus' turf. It is all his nation. It is all his kingdom. And he has the authority to send his people wherever he wants. And so you don't have to worry whether or not you have the authority to speak the name of Jesus or whether or not you should. Your king has commanded you to do so. But for some of us, that's not the hang up. For some of us, the hang up in following Jesus is simply that it's scary to make disciples. It's scary to tell people about Jesus. It's scary to live the Christian life because not everybody around you is going to be cool with that. 
And that's why in verse 20, Jesus continues by telling them to remember that he is always with them to the end of the age. We are comforted not just with his authority, but also with his presence. In that same first chapter of Matthew that declares Jesus to be the king of Israel, it also had a name for Jesus, Emmanuel. We talk about that a lot around Christmas time. And we say, come, O oh come, Emmanuel. And we talk about that, but the truth of the matter is that Jesus is Emmanuel 365 days of the year. He is always God with us. And just as he is always ruling and reigning over everything, he is always the presence that is near and dear to our hearts every minute of every day. He came on this earth. He lived with us. And even once he ascended back to the throne room of heaven right after this conversation on the mountain, he has sent his spirit so his presence is felt with us every step of this journey. And there is a comfort in both the presence and the authority of the king and savior of the universe. Is there not? When I was in high school, I was not a big fella. I was about this height, and I weighed 120 pounds when I graduated. I was like as big as this microphone. Part of me grew, part of me didn't. But I didn't really battle with bullying through high school, and it wasn't because of anything in and of myself, because I was definitely dorky enough and small enough I should have got picked on. I have a Spider-Man water thing up here. What mattered is that some of my best friends were centers on the basketball team and were 6'4 and 6'5 respectively. They had a certain amount of authority that they commanded as they walked down the hallway. And so you can imagine my little 5'7 self walking down the hallway with two six-foot giants on either side of me. Ain't nobody going to mess with me. Both their presence, their nearness, and the authority of their size meant that I had whatever I wanted to do under control. My boys, Miles and Justin, weren't going to let anything happen, no matter how much the little fellow might run his mouth. I know that shocks you. There is a comfort that comes with presence and authority with you. And in Jesus Christ, as we live out this commission, as we live out this calling to make disciples, our Jesus has both the authority in our life and the presence in our life to give us all the comfort we need to live out that calling. And so what is that calling? What is that task? Third and finally, all disciples of Jesus make disciples of Jesus. That is our job. As I said at the very beginning, our purpose of High School Baptist Church is that we love God, we love people, and we make disciples. That is our job. And disciples of Jesus, that process, we see it in verses 19 and 20 right here. Jesus says, go therefore. So because I'm king of everything, because I'm with you always, go. And as you're going, you are making disciples of all nations, everybody, regardless of who you are, regardless of your background, regardless of your ethnicity or your nationality, regardless of your socioeconomic status, are you rich, are you poor, regardless of whoever category and labels we as humans can come up with, that all falls under all nations. We make disciples, we make apprentices of Jesus of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to deserve everything I have committed you. Two aspects of discipleship, baptism and teaching. Now, some churches tend to emphasize one or the other. You might say that there are some schools that would say that they are an evangelism school, and some might say that they're a teaching or discipleship school. But here we're like the University of Auburn and not like one up the street. We're in everything school here. Some of y'all that have been watching the news know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all are like, schools, what? Just, just pay attention to what Coach Cal and Soups are up to. You'll, you'll feel. Go Cats. <laughs> we believe strongly here at Hydesville Baptist Church in both evangelism and baptism that goes alongside it and in discipleship and teaching and training those believers. You must have both to make disciples. You can't do one or the other. It won't work. 
And so baptism, this first aspect where he says, make disciples of all nations by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. What that is, is first evangelism begins it. It's this process where someone hears the good news of Jesus. They hear that they are, in fact, a sinner in need of a Savior. And that they trust and believe that Jesus is their Savior from their sins. That he died on the cross for their sins. And that he is their Lord. He is their King that is going to lead them the rest of their days. Once they come to believe and trust in that, then they are baptized. And we, we showed that this morning. We had two young people come, and they were baptized, showing that they were dead to the old them. And as they resurrected, just as Jesus resurrected from the grave, they declared to the world, Yo, I believe that Jesus is God's son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sins. And I believe that he is my king, and I'm going to follow him the rest of my days. That is what we're talking about here. Baptism is a time for us as believers to declare who our king is. It's a time for us to commit that we are following Jesus. It's a time for us to separate out from where we were in our past life, separate out from following our own desires and our own passions, to separate out from sinfulness and to come into union with Jesus, declaring to the world that I repent of my sin, I turn from my past, and I trust in a new life. We saw two examples of that beautifully this morning. But the Christian walk does not end there. That may be your first chance to obey Jesus, and if you haven't taken that step, that's still step one. I cannot encourage you enough. If you have not taken that first step to follow Jesus through baptism, then you're going to have a really hard time following him any other steps of the way if you won't take the first step. But the next steps are equally important. You cannot follow Jesus without also following him through his teaching. He has given us a life to be lived, and he has told us how to follow it. And here at Heightsville Baptist Church, the way we do that is through our discipleship pathway that you see on the screen behind me. We first introduced this about a year and a half ago, and uh, we are looking to make this a more clear and constant presence in what we do here at Heightsville Baptist Church. But it's just a simple way to show how we teach you to follow Jesus step by step in your journey. So no matter where you are in your discipleship path, maybe you're still kind of doubting. You're not really sure. Or maybe you're much more confident and you feel like you are ready to be making disciples yourself. Regardless of where you are on that spectrum, all disciples of Jesus make disciples of Jesus. And you are called to walk in that journey. So what's that look like at Hyattsville Baptist Church? Well, step one, we see here that we encounter Jesus through worship and participating in our community. The very first step to following Jesus is that you are coming to Jesus. You've, you have accepted him as Lord and Savior. You've been baptized and declared to the world, I follow him. And now you worship with the body of Christ and you participate in your community. That's why you see those triangles are cut in half. There's no aspect of the Christian life that's meant to be lived just in this church building. Discipleship, apprenticeship to Jesus is not something that happens behind these walls. And then when we leave, we leave it back there. We'll pick it up next Sunday. So the top half represents what we do here. But the bottom half is just as important. Just as we worship and encounter Jesus here, we worship and encounter Jesus as we participate in the everyday life of this community. We go to work. We talk to our neighbors. We go to the Rural Heritage slash Tobacco Festival here in a couple weeks. We participate in whatever is happening here in daily life as a Garrett County and as a Lancaster Villian. <laughs> whatever we call people from Lancaster. Am I speaking in tongues today? Am I in the spirit? I don't know. Anyway. As we go through day-to-day -day life here in this county, there is a participating, clear aspect of encountering Jesus just in our day-to-day -day life. And as we do that, and as we grow in our walk with Jesus, Jesus then calls us to find restoration through the gospel, to find further growth in our discipleship process by coming into community with other believers. We do that in this church building through our small group ministries. In the past, we've called them Sunday school. We've called them community groups. I don't really care which one you call it. Maybe your, your group is a Sunday school, and y'all are more of a lecture-based time. Maybe your group's a community group, and you're based more on those relationships, and maybe you got some breakfast along the way. 
All of it falls under the banner of our small group ministries. Those happen at 915 on Sunday mornings here. And that is a chance for you to go from just encountering Jesus in worship to truly diving deeper in your walk with him in the community with other believers. There is absolutely growth that you will not have in your discipleship process, becoming an apprentice of Jesus, if you are not communicating and spending time with other believers. It just won't happen. It's the clear model throughout all of church history is coming together in smaller groups, smaller than what we can do in this room, and spending time with one another in that setting. We also seek that restoration within our church body through uh, our retreats. We do it through our age-graded ministries with our, our kids and our youth ministries. But we also do it outside these church walls through what happens in our restoration ministries. This includes our Impact Men's Ministry, which goes and does a number of service projects throughout our community, especially construction kind of related things. That happens through our WMU and the different ministry ha that happens in our Women's Mi Missionary Union. That happens through our Speak and Serve events that we do on the last Sunday of every month, where we get up out of this building, and we go into our community, and we share the good news with Jesus with those who are not here. We do that together as a community, going further in our walk with Jesus. And as you find that restoration, Jesus then will lead you and call you into engaging him more directly. We do that here through serving in our local church, on our ministry teams, things like hospitality or service or worship, where you can find a place to serve here on a regular basis and to use your spiritual gifts that God has called you to to greater advance the kingdom. But we also do that beyond these walls through real gospel conversations with our community. We do not just go in our community to do good works and hope that they figure out Jesus is behind it. It is absolutely crucial that as God's people, we do those good works. We serve our community, but we make explicit that it is in the name of Jesus that we do that. We want to help people see the hope of the gospel and tell them the good news of Jesus. And that leads us all to that final and fourth step, to multiplication, to multiplying. We do that within our church building by either leading one of our small group ministries, or maybe you just mentor and get with, with a person, maybe in your ministry team or in your sphere of influence here at church, and you're walking with them. That's, in fact, exactly what the book of Titus says in the New Testament, that we are called as believers to mentor those who are younger in the faith than us. I need mentors. You need mentors. We all need someone to disciple us, to apprentice us, in the faith with Jesus. And if you're not actively being discipled or helping make disciples, and ideally really both, then that is a step you need to take. We also want to do that beyond these church walls by multiplying the witness of Jesus, supporting church planning and church revitalization efforts both in our community and beyond. That's a lot. I know that's a lot. But I want to encourage you as we close out this time this morning to think about where you are on that journey. Are you encountering Jesus and worshiping with him? Have you even declared him as your Lord and Savior at all? Have you taken that step of baptism and said to the world, I'm a new person. I'm a born again in Jesus. I trust in him. If you have, if that's you, if you're already in step one, then I want to encourage you. What's stopping you from going into step two and finding that deeper restoration through discipleship in our communities? Going to our small group ministries, being a part of our restoration ministries. What's stopping those of you in our small groups? What's stopping you in our WMU and our impact? What's stopping those of you participating in Speak and Serve from then taking that next step and really starting to engage your neighbor in the good news of the gospel? One in ten believers shares the gospel in a month. And yet most of us have been following Jesus for longer than these disciples had been. And they were out there literally writing the Bible. The only thing that's stopping any of us from taking these steps and from being truly multiplying disciple, making disciples ourselves is our own fear. Our own lack of comfort. 
And I want to encourage you today, remember, you have the person of Jesus. That is why he both started and ended his great commission pointing to who he is. I know it's intense to think about where you are in these steps and how you can take that next step. And that requires boldness. But remember, you have the authority from on high to do it, and you have the comfort through Jesus Christ to accomplish it. And so as Dan comes and as we close, this is going to be a time of response for you. I want you to think about where you fall on this spectrum in our pathway of discipleship. If you've never trusted in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to encourage you today to come and to talk to us about that. To take that next step to trust in him and to begin your discipleship journey. I want to extend a special invitation today to those of you who have never stepped forward in baptism, as we've seen happen today. I know of no better way for you to respond to a sermon to a time in God's word about baptism than to get baptized right here, right now. If you want to get baptized today, after this service, I want to encourage that invitation. Come on down. We'll make it happen. We're going to have some deacons down here to help you walk through that process to make sure that you are ready to take that step. And then I'll go throw my waders back on and we'll hop in the water. But wherever you are, whatever God's calling you to next, maybe it's church membership, maybe it's some kind of leadership or ministry role, I don't know what it is. But don't let this moment pass by. Come during the first lines of this song and respond as you feel led. And let's do that now. Let's stand together. <clears throat> wow. Passing through this world of sin and others, your life shall view. Be clean and pure without, within. Let others see Jesus in you. Let others see Jesus in you. a book before their eyes they're reading it through and through say does it point them to the skies do others see Jesus in you let others see Jesus in you has been a good day of worship with y'all. Amen? Amen? It's been good uh, spending time with you this morning. I look forward to tonight at 6 o'clock when we come back for business meeting. I just want to encourage you. Your time of response doesn't end right now. Like Dan stepped off, oh, I can't respond to Jesus. I can guarantee you if God is calling you to do something, that chance has not passed. I'll be at the back here in just a second. I want to encourage you to stop by. Talk to me if God's putting something on your heart. If you're just like, hey, I didn't want to jump out there in front of everybody. I totally understand. Most of the baptisms we've seen lately have been that exact kind of, kind of behind the scenes conversation. I know it's scary to get in front of people. And that's coming from someone who literally does it every week. And it terrifies me. So I understand. So please come talk to me if God has put something on your heart. And we'll, we'll talk through that. Uh, I do hope to see you tonight.
I also want to encourage ladies, go ahead and sign up for the WMU conference out there on the bulletin board and run, don't walk to get a backpack. But before we do that, uh, we've got Roland going to come up and pray to close us out. Brother, come on. I'll add to what he said. It is hard for, to come down here. I did it when I was, I was about 16 years old. And so let's pray, please. A gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you so much this day. Thank you, Father, for this our service. Father, thank you for this sermon. Father, thank you for sending this young man our, our, our way, Father. Also, Heavenly Father, just be with us. Thank you so much for you. Your blessing was here, Father. Be with each and every one as we go home, Father. I also come back, Father. Watch over us. Thank you so much. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hey, Sam, hey.